booktube this is the 2015 end of year bookish survey I got my ticket for the long way round. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and it is rather late in the year to be doing a 2015 survey and talking about books from last year but I love these questions and I really wanted to do it so I had to split it up into two parts and it's been a complete nightmare to edit but oh well I'm finally getting it done. I saw this on Caitlin's channel at Book Chats, and I really liked it. It's done from a blog, Perpetual Pages, and Caitlin, I think, saw Trina at Between Chapters do it. So anyway, all the links are below, and you can follow the rabbit trail. And this is done in four sections. So this is, uh, part one is section one and two, and basically it's just stats, and then all about the books of 2015. And then part two will be some other things. So here is part one. I read 222 books last year. Two. Contemporary, uh, which was 58%, according to Goodreads. But I will tell you that I love romance. I do love me a good romance. So I read a lot of romance. But when I shelve a book as romance, it could be any other genre. So I just went with what Goodreads said. And they said contemporary. If I had to, you know, answer that, I would probably say romance. I got to tell you, my answer to every one of these questions is illuminate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it just is. This is an amazing book. It was the best book for me of 2015. It is just told in such an incredibly inventive and creative format. And on audio, it is wonderful. So I'm going to say that at the outset, and I'm going to give you different answers. But you may assume that every single answer for this, my top pick, Illuminate. Confess by Colleen Hoover and... I love Colleen Hoover, but I did not love this book. Weak plot, weak characters that I wanted to smack about half the time. I just I just wanted to shake them and go, what is the matter with you? The plot twist she normally throws in was weak, and I just, no. And on top of that, I could not stand these narrators. I have stopped listening to them. Mm -mm, not my favorite. Tales of the Madman Underground by John Barnes. My daughter bought this and she read it. She said, Mom, you'll love it. And I said, Ooh, not really my thing, but it ended up being my thing. It's about a kid in high school in the 1970s. So I never would have imagined that I liked this book, but I tabbed it all up. And I don't even tab books because they're never that profound. But this was, so what a surprise. The Lucky Harbor series. This is just the first book. It's 12 books, but man, I have been talking nonstop about Jill Shalvis and the Lucky Harbor series. And man, people are picking it up and going, I get it. I see what you mean. So that makes me happy because I love this series. The Iron Chronicles by Elizabeth Hunter. I fell in love with this series and I'm still in love with it. Uh, it's best series for me of last year. Another Day by David Levithan. This is a companion book to Every Day, which is one of my top favorite books of all time. It was like getting to enjoy it all over again. The Revolution of Ivy by uh, Amy Engel. Just an incredible series ender. I've done a review on that, so everything is in the box. I'm so happy that I discovered Elizabeth Hunter. I also discovered Jill Shalvis, so these are both my favorite authors. That was Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. I was so surprised that I liked this book. I never would have expected to love very technical science fiction, but boy, I just ate it up. Five star book for me. It was amazing. Winter by Marissa Meyer, and that's because that book was moving all the time. I mean, there was always something happening and some crisis that had to be dealt with. And I thought it did an amazing job of wrapping up all of the characters. Winter is the last book in the Lunar Chronicles. Couldn't put that one down. I think I'm 
going to be reading the Pillars of Reality series by Jack Campbell. This is YA fantasy. They're all narrated on audio by McLeod Andrews, and I'm going to thoroughly enjoy the series again. It'll really be good to listen to them back to back, I think, to get the whole story. So kind of the evolution of the characters. Oh, love that series. I read a lot of pretty books last year, but when I had to look back and see the prettiest one, I settled on The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This was not a great, really knock you out kind of book. I was not overly impressed with it. It was okay. I liked it. But this cover is stunning. I think that was David from the Reckoner series by Brandon Sanderson. I read Firefight this past year, Steelheart is the first book in that series, and then Calamity is the third book, and that's going to be due out in March. But the main character is David, and he is so endearing. I loved him. I really did. He's so uh, bumbling and humble, and he's thinking through what he's doing, and he's going... I shouldn't have done that. Oh gosh, well, but what if I do this? And some of the things that he does, you're not uh, in on his inner monologue, so you don't know what he's going to do. And then he does it and you're like, oh my gosh, that was a good idea. So yeah, I think he was the standout last year. For this one, I have a tie between The uh, Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender, which is by Leslie Walton, and I thought was a beautiful story. It's the kind of book that you get to the end and you think, that was beautiful. And the other was The Ice Queen by Alice Hoffman. And same thing, I got to the end of this book and I thought, that was beautiful. This made me fall in love with Alice Hoffman's writing. The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. This book really hit me on a very personal level with regard to Christian ministry because that's my life. And I was amazed that Michelle Faber as a secular atheist could capture what it's like to be doing ministry. I, I couldn't get over that. Really, really was thought provoking. And it really, like I say, hit me right in the heart. I did a review on that. It's also linked in the box. Soulless by Gail Carriger. This is the first book in the Parasol Protectorate series and it is narrated on audio by Emily Gray. Who gets it right? Oh, she just nails Alexia Terabody. I had two for this, and one is funny, so I'll give you that one first. It's from Tales of the Madman Underground by John Barnes, which is not available on audio, by the way. And this was funny because this is me. Um, I was raised in the same place that this takes place, and it says, But I've been raised pure Ohio. The zeroth commandment was, Thou shalt not be any trouble to anybody ever. That is so true. Man, if I didn't hear that a hundred times from my grandmother, I don't know what I heard. My other favorite quote is from The Ice Queen by Alice Hoffman. To hell with human beings. I'd always felt safer with stories than with flesh and blood. She runs. Not away, but toward. The shortest book was So Long, Lollipops, which is a novella in the Until the End of the World series by Sarah Lyons Fleming. And it's about three hours long listening time. The longest book I read was Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson, and I think that was like 33 hours of listening time. It's so worth it. This is an odd choice, I know, but it was the second book in the, in the Until the End of the World series. It's called And After, and Sarah Lyons Fleming pulled something out of her hat in terms of a plot twist and pretty much annihilated me. I mean, I, I was listening and I went, oh, I can't believe she did that. Boy, this author was not afraid to go there. That was a shocker. Yeah, I got to go back to Elizabeth Hunter with uh, the Iron Chronicles. Ava and Malachi, I love them. Believe it or not, as much as I love romance, and you know I love romance, I had a couple of favorite groups of characters that were friends. One was The Guys from Under Different Stars by Amy A. Bartolt. This is book one in the Cricket series, and the guys that I'm talking about are Trey, who is the primary love interest, and Wayra and Jax. And they are kind of like a special forces unit that is dispatched to uh, get Cricket and bring her back to her home planet. And just the banter that goes on between these guys, they're soldiers. 
who doesn't love soldiers? I just, oh, they were so cool. The Cricket series is narrated on audio by Kate Rudd, and she is a, probably part of the reason that those characters are so good and those friendships are so endearing and so funny. And the other one was uh, the three guys from the last three books in this uh, Lucky Harbor series by Jill Shalvis. Jill Shalvis can write guys' dialogue, like joking around with each other, better than any author I think I've ever read. And the three guys in these last three books all own a boat company, and they take people out fishing and scuba diving and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And um, their names are Sam, who is my favorite, and then Cole and Tanner. And they're all friends that met when they worked on an oil rig. And uh, <laughs> just the friendship between the three of them is priceless. November 9th by Colleen Hoover. And I really think this is Colleen Hoover's best book yet. Um, at least it's my favorite. I got the idea to read these Jill Shalva's books from Gwen at the Gwendolyn Reading Method. I get crushes on all kinds of people, like babies, girls, boys, you know, old people, young people, all kinds of people. But I think my favorite crush is Sam from It's In His Kiss. Yeah, Sam. He was so good. I, oh, yeah, I kind of fell for him. Kind of fell for Malachi from the Iron Chronicles, too. And even Ed, the caveman Ed from Transcendence. Yeah, I kind of fell for all of them. Yeah, it doesn't take much with me, with romance. I just, I fall for everybody. And Ember in the Ashes. Wow, that book by Sabah Tahir, it is amazing. And it blew me away. Wow, it was really, really good. I'm really looking forward to that sequel. It's called A Torch in the Night, I think. And it'll be out later this year, but whew, boy. Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson was really, really interesting. And it was such a departure from the norm uh, with YA and the settings. It wasn't contemporary. It wasn't dystopian. It wasn't post-apocalyptic. It wasn't fantasy. It was the gold rush from the 1800s. And it was so good because it detailed how cheap life was back then because you did, there was just not the technology, the medical abilities to fix people, you know. I mean, if you got a bad cut, you had to have your leg taken off, that kind of thing. It was really, really an amazing world that she recreated from just that time period. And the woman did her research, and I was really impressed. I laughed at a lot of books this past year, which is such a pleasure, but I'm going to go with The Ace of Skulls by Chris Wooding. This is the, the last book in the Ketty J series, and this little ensemble of characters is hysterically funny. They're so funny. So, uh, you know, it really, really made me laugh. Very funny book. The Summer Remains by Seth King is the closest I came to crying. I don't cry usually at books because I don't, I have a thing about not wanting to be manipulated emotionally by a book. I want to have an emotional response, but I want it to be my choice and not, you know, because the author did something to get me there. That just bugs me. But that book was a lot like The Fault in Our Stars, and I think it was done better. Kind of a tearjerker. Yeah, choked me up. The Snow Child by uh, Eowyn Ivey. This is narrated on audio by Deborah Monk, and she's really able to capture the whole uh, atmosphere of the book. It's set in Alaska in the 1920s, and it's a retelling of a modern fairy tale, The Snow Maiden, which is a Russian fairy tale. And I was so impressed with this. I, I think it's really, a, it really is a gem, and you should read it in the winter, and uh, it really surprised me. I don't read books that crush my soul. I purposely do not read books like that because I don't want to have my soul crushed. I read for entertainment. I don't want to be depressed. But I read The Ring and the Crown by Melissa de la Cruz and oh my gosh, that ending just wrecked me. I thought, you gotta be kidding me. It was the right ending, but oh, it was so sad. It was so sad and I just thought, oh my gosh, I just, Oh, it really did kind of crush my soul. Transcendence by Shay Savage. It's so unique because it's about a caveman and it's written from his perspective. And he has uh, no capacity for language because the brocus area of his brain isn't developed. And it's his romance with a modern girl who fell through time. It's really, really unique. 
I like the story in these books, but I do not like the way it's being released, and that's Never Never by Taryn Fisher and Colleen Hoover. I think these are two talented writers. It's a three-book series now, and they've spent a lot of time in between releasing them, and they're like novellas. They're not even full-length books, and it makes me mad that I'm having to wait because I feel like I'm being manipulated as a, a book buyer and a reader, and I, I get why it is. There's some kind of publishing glitch with their, their companies where they're not allowed to write a book together. Well, whatever. Release them all three at the same time, you know, or get a month in between or something. I don't know, but it just, that just annoys me to no end. Ugh. And are you going to read Illuminae? Have you read Illuminae? You should read Illuminae. Illuminae is the answer to all of life's questions and mysteries. Yeah, I love this book. So that's part one, and I will be back with part two. Please talk to me about the books. I would love to hear your thoughts, love to hear everything you think about all of these books I've talked about. So let's do that in comments, and I will be back with part two. I'll see you then. I'm Thanks gone. for watching. I'm gone. You're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk. You're gonna miss me by my talk. Oh, you're gonna miss me when I'm